Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on WW Personal Points. Happy, happy Monday. It's Monday, so it's meal prep day. I have three really, really good recipes for you. Healthy, low point, full of protein, just really, really good recipes. So if you're excited, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on because I do a meal prep every single Monday. I will link my website down in the description box where you will find all of today's recipes as well as all of my other recipes. Nutrition coaching where I offer personalized to you macros and calories as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things and my Facebook Facebook group, come on over, join us there, is all down in that description box. So we have some cooking to do, some really good recipes. Let's jump in. breakfast this week. I'm really excited for this recipe. I am making ham and cheese chaffles. Now it has been a long time since I've made some chaffles. So I am excited to have these all week. I'm going to pair these with some fruit. So let me show you what's in our recipe. First you're going to need some eggs, any type of flour. You could use almond flour, coconut flour. I'm just going to use all purpose flour. You'll need this cute little dash waffle maker. These are adorable. I've had mine for a very long time. I just bought it off of Amazon, so I'll make sure it's linked down below for you. Some salt and pepper, baking powder, light shredded cheese, and of course some ham. So to put our chaffles together, the first thing we're going to do is crack two eggs into a medium sized bowl. Give that a light whisk just to kind of mix those eggs together. Now we're going to add in one quarter cup of flour, one half of a teaspoon of baking soda, or baking powder, I'm sorry, baking powder, three quarters of a cup of light shredded cheese, and three quarters of a cup of diced ham. And then once again, whisk that all together with a fork or a whisk until fully mixed. So here is what our mixture looks like. It's nice and thick. We just wanted to make sure that the baking powder and the flour got dispersed so that these will fluff up really nicely. So I have my little dash waffle maker all warmed up. It only takes a couple minutes to warm up. I'm going to spray the bottom and the top with some nonstick cooking spray. And then we're going to add in our chaffle mixture. Now our goal is five chaffles, but again, it really doesn't matter how many you get because you'll just figure the points according to how many chaffles you end up with. One thing to be mindful with these little dash maker waffle makers is to not overfill them because everything will just spill out the side. So I'm just adding enough to cover basically the bottom pan of the waffle maker. Go ahead and shut it. You can see that the light is on. When it is cooked all the way through, the light will turn off. All right, our light is off. Oh wow, these look amazing. Now they pop out really, really easy out of the little dash waffle maker once they're cooked through. And what I'm going to do is just set them on a plate and set them aside to cool. So let's go ahead and start chaffle number two. with four chaffles. Now a little pro tip for you, if you put a little less mixture in your little waffle maker over there, you wouldn't have these extra, this extra around the edges and I think you would be able to get five chaffles. So what I'm going to do is I will put the points and calories here on the screen for four and then I will put the points here on the screen for five. That way you know the difference between four chaffles or five chaffles, but these look really good. I think I'm actually going to have one of these for lunch today or maybe like a snack. This is such a low carb, high protein breakfast option. Again, pair this with some fruit and you have a perfect well-rounded breakfast. These little chaffles freeze really, really well and you can keep these in your refrigerator up to one week. So generally what I will do is when I'm ready to have them for breakfast, I'll either pop them in my air fryer, oven or microwave to warm them up, just depending on if you want them crispy again or not, but such a great breakfast option. For my lunch, 
brunch this week. We are going simple. I have been loving lettuce wraps. I actually shared a copycat Jimmy John's lettuce wrap in a what I've eaten a day that I'm literally obsessed with. I'll link that video down below if you haven't seen it because that one is so good. So that inspired me to try more of an Italian, like the Subway Italian BMT style of lettuce wrap for lunches. Super, super simple. So let me show you what's in our recipe. So first you're going to need some hard salami. I'm using turkey pepperoni just to save points in calories. I'm also using a light cheese. This is the light Havarti from Trader Joe's. It is so good. You'll need some lettuce. My favorite is iceberg. I know it doesn't have a lot of nutritional value, but for lettuce wraps, it seems to work the best. So I have iceberg and then some light mayo. Now, one more thing you can add to these Italian wraps is some pepper pepperoncinis. I swore I had some and I don't. I am going to pick some up and add them in to my lunches this week because I think that will just really finish this off. So keep that in mind. I will include the pepperoncinis on my website with today's recipe. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my lettuce prepped. What I like to do is just go ahead and prep the entire head of lettuce for lettuce wraps. So for these lunch Italian lettuce wraps, we also have a recipe this week that calls for a lettuce wrap. So what I do is generally clean up the head of lettuce, wash all of the lettuce leaves, and then I store them in a Ziploc bag. That way the lettuce leaves are ready to go to assemble any wraps. I always go ahead and pop out the core of my lettuce. That just makes getting the lettuce leaves off much easier. And if you do want to store your head of lettuce complete like this, make sure you take the core out. It'll last a lot longer. So I go ahead and just pull all of the larger leaves off and then I will either Either chop up the remaining lettuce or I will go ahead and just discard it if I'm really down to the center where the lettuce just isn't as good. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the big lettuce leaves, wash those up, and we'll put those in a Ziploc bag. For my lettuce leaves, I always put a paper towel in the bottom to soak up any liquid and in the top. That way, as they cool in the refrigerator and as they sit, most of the extra liquid will be absorbed by the paper towels. And these lettuce wraps should last a week to two weeks, depending on how they're stored and your refrigerator. So for the lettuce wrapped Italian sandwiches, I'm not actually going to assemble one right now because I don't want the mayonnaise to kind of soak into the lettuce, but I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to be doing to assemble the lettuce wrap. Now keep in mind that depending on the cheese you use, the turkey pepperoni, the salami, whether or not you use a light mayo, your points may vary. So I'm going to walk you through what I'm doing for my wraps and I'll give you the points for my wraps. That way if you want to duplicate my brand of pepperoni, salami, and cheese, you'll know exactly how many points it is. Otherwise, all you have to do is simply change the brand and the amount in your app. So of course I have my lettuce here, and then I went ahead and used, again, the Boar's Head Turkey Pepperoni. 16 slices of pepperoni is a serving, and it is 70 calories. So I ended up going with 12 slices of the turkey pepperoni. That's a decent amount, and that will definitely fill the lettuce wrap and give that really good Italian vibe. And then I also use the boar's head uncured hard salami. Now 12 slices of the salami is 110 calories. So what I did, because this is a little bit fattier meat, higher calorie, higher point meat, what I ended up doing was six slices of the salami. This pepperoni is really going to give it all those Italian feels. And then this will just add a little bit of extra protein and more of that dried smoked flavor. And then the light Havarti cheese from Trader Joe's is 70 calories per slice. So I ended up going with one full slice. I did rip it in half. I may even rip it into quarters just so that I can make sure I spread the cheese evenly over all of the lettuce. And then lastly, I'm going to use some light mayo. I may use one tablespoon. I may use two tablespoons. I'm betting with 
the lettuce wrap, I'll end up only using one tablespoon. Otherwise, we would have quite a big mayonnaise to meat and cheese ratio. And then last, we can incorporate some pepperoncinis. They would be zero additional points. So that's my plan for assembling. This is all my filling. I mean, this is a lot of meat. It's a good amount of cheese, a lot of protein, and it's really going to make a fresh, crisp sandwich dupe that is much lower in carbs, calories, and points. snack this week, I am making protein bites. It's been a while since I've made these. I found this recipe and it sounds incredible. These are a no bake protein bite. So super, super simple to make. I'll show you a different, I'll show you a substitution that you can make, but these are a great healthy fat, carbohydrate rich, but healthy carbohydrates, protein packed snack. You could use this as breakfast. This is also great for on the go. So let me show you what's in our recipe. First, you're going to need some protein powder. Now the recipe calls for vanilla protein, but whenever it calls for vanilla, I always, always substitute with the Devotion Angel Food Cake because this is just vanilla on steroids. It is so, so good. It has such great flavor. Devotion is excellent for baking, but it's also excellent for protein shakes and protein smoothies. It has no sugar added, one gram of MCT, which is a healthy fat, gluten-free and six enzymes. It also has 20 grams of protein. The flavor is really good. It doesn't have any weird aftertaste. So you'll see me substituting the angel food cake a lot for vanilla. I also love their brownie batter and their mocha. I'll link devotion down below for you guys with a discount. If you're going to use protein powder to bake or in oatmeal or these types of things, definitely get your hands on devotion. You're also going to need some rolled oats, some flaxseed meal, peanut butter. Now here's a substitution. You can either use actual creamy peanut butter. That's what I'm going to do because I need the protein and the healthy fats. Or if you want to save some points, you could use a powdered peanut butter, make it up with some water or sugar-free syrup or whatever you use to make up your PB2 or your powdered peanut butter and use that in place of actual peanut butter. And of course, that's going to save you some points. I, again, am just using regular peanut butter. You'll need some honey, chocolate chips of your choice. I'm going with Lily's white chocolate chips because I'm hoping that if I use these, my husband will eat these as well. He does not eat chocolate. And honestly, he doesn't really eat white chocolate, but I don't know if he'll notice it as much in these little balls. So I'm going with Lily's white chocolate. And then lastly, you'll need some chia seeds. It is very simple to make our protein bites. Everything goes into one bowl. So I have three quarters of a cup of peanut butter. Now the recipe says to use a drippy peanut butter. And you can see that this one from Trader Joe's isn't as thick and clumpy as a lot of other brands of peanut butter. And I also would recommend steering clear of peanut butters like Jif and Skippy and the ones that have a lot of added sugar and oils because that's really just going to up the points and calories. This is literally just peanuts and salt. So keep that in mind as well. We're going to do one quarter cup of our ground flaxseed, one half of a cup of rolled oats, one third of a cup of protein powder, which ironically was exactly one scoop. So that makes it very, very easy to track. One tablespoon of honey, two tablespoons of chia seeds, and three tablespoons of Lily's chocolate chips, whether you're using chocolate or white chocolate. And then with a the spoon, just mix that together really well. You can also add in a little bit of water if you need a little bit more moisture to mix everything together. It should be kind of this peanut butter-like consistency so that we can roll it into balls. Here's what my mixture looks like. I ended up not having to add any water. So that whole drippy, really creamy peanut butter is the trick. And then we're going to roll these out into protein balls. Again, it doesn't matter how many protein balls you end up getting. We'll go ahead and calculate points based on the number that we get. I'm thinking this is about the right size, which looks like about a tablespoon size. So I'm just going to roll those out, put them here on a plate, and then we'll know exactly how to calculate our points and calories. So here are the protein bites. These look so 
incredibly delicious. I ended up getting 19 total. I will put the points and calories here on the screen for 19. Now remember, if you get more, it'll be less points. If you get less, it'll potentially be less points. So it just depends on how many you end up rolling out. You can the best way to store these would be to put these in a sealed container and store them in your refrigerator. So I will go ahead and package these up, show you how I'm storing them, and they should last up to two weeks in your refrigerator. And also you can freeze these, which makes it really nice to have a healthy snack on hand. Seriously excited for these. So I went ahead and put my little protein bites in one of my glass containers. I love these, these are so pretty. They have wood lids. I got these off of Amazon. I'll link these as well for you guys. But the glass containers, I feel like just keeps food lasting fresher longer. I don't know why, especially, especially veggies and fruit. So this is how I am planning on storing my little protein balls. And I will go ahead and just pop these into my refrigerator. Thank you for joining me on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope you are as excited about these three recipes as I am. Don't forget they are all on my website, which is linked in the description box, along with nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things and my Facebook group. We'd love to have you over there. Don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe if you're not. Ring your bell so you never miss a single video. Happy Monday, friends, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.